the United Uprising channel. Welcome to today's show. This is another really important video because you have to understand and see these stories for what they are. CNN, a lot of mainstream media outlets, Business Insider have these articles out saying, could carbon passports that limit, limit how much we travel be in our future? They are convincing people about carbon passports, which have to do with your digital ID. Remember, the carbon footprint will be full on tracking of your every move, but they'll use this whole psyop of the climate change agenda to enslave you. It's an enslavement system all based on the environment, things that people just can't wrap their heads around, don't realize the carbon emission that they want to eliminate is you. You're the carbon, right? Carbon-based life form, humans, you ever hear that expression? They're talking about you, and I'll show you and prove that to you during this video. But these articles are out there about carbon passports and how we need to start limiting our travel. And there's multiple psyops going on at once, okay? And I'll get into that in a second because you need to see all these other stories. All you got to do is Google, you know, any type of thing with an airline. And there's all these stories every single day that come out. And I'll show you in a second. I want to let you know that the event that over at UNLV, the college, I have a video up on the website, uprisingrevival.com, that everybody needs to see. If you're over on the website, obviously, I highly recommend people for $3 join the website. $3 for a month for unlimited content, uncensored videos. The forum is completely active. You can spend, you can go in there at 12 o'clock at night. Seven o'clock in the morning. There's always constant updates in there. People post all the time. Every couple minutes, there's new stuff being shared, and it's important stuff. Stuff people need to know. It's very active. It's worth the three dollars. And uh, you know, if, if, if anybody who does celebrate the pagan holidays, hey, you want to give somebody a gift? It's a good one to give. But the UNLV event that just occurred, there is a bunch of talking points and things out there. It's the same script every time, right? It was just released that the guy, of course, conveniently has his own website. What's he talking about on his website? The Bilderberg meeting, the Rothschilds, uh, global conspiracy, all that type of stuff, right? Those are the quotes that are in it. The talking point headline, I'll read you specifically the headline so you can have a little giggle for yourself, is that the, uh, the supposed person at the UNLV event has a website where he talks about global powerful organizations who are bent on global domination. Sound familiar? Of course, it's the same script. Because they need to build inside of your mind what the illusion of the newest threat is. So all these events, the person who's responsible, who does these crazy things, are people like us, they want to say. Right? And then what do they want to do? They want to pass these laws. They call them red flag laws. And everyone goes, well, that's a good thing to have, right? Because somebody has mental health problems, they shouldn't be able to get one. Right? And then they don't realize it. Just like hate speech, those laws start to get changed and changed and changed as once we put them in place. Then suddenly anybody who looks up conspiracies is considered a threat because all the false flags that they make up, they have these people tied into those. They say, they're the great threat. These are the guys who are doing it. Look at the look at the symbolism here or the repetition here. All the guys involved in these events happen to look up conspiracies. Thus, they'll remove those types of things from our homes because we're the greatest threat to them. The information we give is a great threat. And us actually leading something against what's going on because we have the understanding of what's going on is a great threat. So those are the narrative swells. We have a great great actor that shows up at the event which is on the website who also happened to be at the same event that occurred in las vegas uh, i believe it was six years and 66 weeks to the day in las vegas that event that i believe i got a strike for back when that happened as well you might remember the casino there was a concert going on right so it's also LeBron James is tying all this stuff it's very interesting for anybody out there that wants uncensored content it's over on the website you can't talk about it here you can't because if people see the repetition in the script, they use the same script with every one of these events. Oh, the guy who did it's no longer here. There's never a trial. It's like the little Lee Harvey Oswald tale, right? It's the same script. If people saw the script, that's what they want removed from the internet. That's why they don't let you talk about it here, okay? Because if people see the script and they see the pattern, the patterns I try to show you even with the basic music video, they see the repetition and it's brought to their attention, their brains wake up and they snap out of it because their brain starts going, wait, I am seeing a pattern can't deny the pattern you can't deny it once you see it the problem is that people don't see it but when you piece it together so they can see it they wake up that's something i've been gifted and able to do over the years that's one of the reasons i'm not allowed to do it or talk about these things specifically on this platform so that video is available over on the website hope to see more over there so back to the story at hand here could carbon passports limit how much we travel in the future yes it could and it will that's part of it so you may have noticed and people don't get it with the carbon footprint right you're going to be a slave, period. There's no negotiation. You don't get out of it based on if you're a Biden voter or a Trump voter. All of us are. Not John Kerry, not Joe Biden, not Trump. None of them 
We'll be following these rules. They're for you and me. And with technology implemented, you won't be allowed to do any of these things because when you go to buy a plane ticket, it'll be declined. You won't be allowed on the plane because they'll have your carbon footprint monitored. Oh, you've been out of the house for this long? Then you can't go on the plane. You've already exposed or you, you've already uh, maximized your carbon footprint for the month. It's enslavement. It's the same look at the way we look at prisoners. They get 30 minute recess, right? That's what you're going to get. Your home is your cell. They can't put everybody in this world in a prison cell. So we've made our homes prison cells by putting this tech in here. They're listening to us. They're watching us. Okay. Now they want control of your thermostat, your oven, all of that. That's what it's all about. It's not about the environment. They show you by their fruits that they don't care about the environment because they fly in private jets all over the place and they contradict themselves. But they don't have to be held accountable because everybody's too busy, the left and right, fighting amongst each other on politics instead of calling out the small group of people who are doing it. So they're trying to get you used to a life without traveling. That just could, that just occurred with the outbreak, right? People accepted that they couldn't go anywhere. Then they had to accept that they had to be tested if they wanted to go or have that certain thing in their body if they wanted to go. And then we hear talks of what? Digital ID and all this other stuff. We know who has it and who doesn't. All of this is coming with the carbon passport, the digital ID, whatever they decide to name it, the mark of the beast. Very well could be named that. And people would still make sure they have it and oblige to it because they'll say they're just joking around. They're just trolling, right? So the other thing before I get into the articles about the, the carbon passports and how they're trying to convince people that it's a good thing and a good idea. Have you noticed? I've covered this. How many stories are out there? about events occurring on planes, pilots supposedly trying to crash planes, people on the plane being disorderly, all these things that go viral on purpose. Nobody heard this stuff 10 years ago about flying 20 years ago. You wouldn't, even if some events did occur in a plane where they had to land the plane, it wouldn't make national news. Every day, if you Google, and I, and I don't know the exact sentence to use, but I have some of the articles up. If you Google something about, you know, uh, craziness on a plane, plane, you know, emergency landing, that type of stuff, every day. Delta pilot charged after allegedly pulling a gun on the captain in the cockpit while they were mid-flight. ABC's Gio Benitez, uh, what that pilot now charged was allegedly angry about. Tonight, a Delta pilot is facing criminal charges after allegedly pulling a gun on the captain in the cockpit. A grand jury in Utah indicting First Officer Jonathan Dunn for assaulting and intimidating a crew member back in August 2022. It happened after a disagreement over whether to divert the flight for a passenger's medical emergency. Dunn, allegedly with gun in hand, is accused of telling his co-pilot, the captain, that he would be shot multiple times if the captain diverted the flight. The Department of Transportation's Office of Inspector General says Dunn was authorized to carry a gun in the cockpit through the TSA's Federal Flight Deck Officer program that was put in place after 9-11. It's part of a layered program that TSA has in place to protect the traveling public. It comes just days after off-duty Alaska Airlines pilot Joseph David Emerson pleaded not guilty to 83 counts of attempted murder for allegedly trying to crash a passenger jet. That pilot telling police he was having a nervous breakdown after consuming psychedelic mushrooms. Meanwhile, David, Delta says that Jonathan Dunn is no longer working for the airline. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison. And again, that program allowing guns in the cockpit was intended to be another layer of security. This morning, the FBI is investigating after an off-duty pilot allegedly tried to crash a passenger plane. Alaska Airlines Flight 2059 left Everett, Washington for San Francisco Sunday, packed with 80 passengers. And in the cockpit, 44-year-old Joseph Emerson, an off-duty pilot with Alaska Air, hitching a ride in the jump seat. Soon after takeoff, officials say Emerson tried to cut the plane's engines by pulling the fire extinguisher handles, known as the T-handles. The T-handles which is what this individual tried to pull on each engine, actually turns the engine off and prepares it for a fire extinguisher. The problem is, at high altitude, you can get the engines restarted. At low altitude, that could be a fatal result. The crew was able to overpower Emerson, handcuffing him to a seat in the cabin. We've got the uh, guy that tried to shut the engine down uh, out of the cockpit. Doesn't sound like he's causing an issue in the back right now. I think he's subdued. The pilots then diverted to Portland, where Emerson was taken into custody. After we did land and the gentleman was escorted off, the flight attendant got back on the speaker and said, plain and simple, 
he had a mental breakdown. Passenger planes have been deliberately crashed before. In 2015, officials say a co-pilot on a suicide mission crashed this German Wings flight into the Alps. And last year, authorities believe this China Eastern flight was brought down intentionally. The FAA relies on pilots to self-report any mental health conditions during annual visits with aviation medical examiners. Pilots only get additional psychological testing if it's requested by their examiner. The FAA recently acknowledged hiring additional mental health professionals. As for Joseph Emerson, a neighbor described him as friendly. We just can't imagine him doing anything that would hurt any of Look at some of these things here. I'm reading you. Here's an article, Jacksonville. It was scary. Like, like the event on the 11th day of September was flashing in my head. Passengers share video of diverted flight to Jacksonville. Horror moment. Plane engine explodes minutes after takeoff, leaving aircraft trailing fire before emergency, right? These are different stories, right? The most dangerous airport in the world. These are all subliminally done to get you to not want to travel. They don't, in a new world order, you are not vacationing or traveling. Everything is going to be virtual. You're going to be enslaved in your home. And then, of course, as they push the metaverse and technology, they'll tell you, well, you know, you can be a good citizen, but you can get this virtual headset and you could live in the metaverse. You could live in Grand Theft Auto. You could live in Maui with your headsets on. Well, now it used to be at least, right? Oh, you don't have to worry about getting out there because you're a carbon footprint. We can't let you out there because we have to take responsibility for the environment. All these suckers will believe it. And then these subliminal stories are in place as well, right? So it's not just your carbon footprint because if you're someone who's like, I don't care about, well, I'll do some things with the environment, but I'm not going to stop traveling. Well, these are other ways that they tactically are going after you psychologically to make you not want to travel. Oh, planes are diverting. Pilots are trying to crash planes. All this insane crap is all strategically done the stories are fabricated they're pumped out there they're pushed out there they put agents on planes to create these events they never go to jail you never hear from them again after you see their viral video of them yelling on the plane at the flight attendants it's to make you not want to ever go on a plane right and then you're going to go well you can always drive there right that'll be your next day. i don't i don't need to go to hawaii and fly there maybe i'll just drive to florida oh right well that's the next step right that's the next step, getting you in that car that, of course, is electric. Won't, won't take you from Maine to Florida. Won't take you from Texas to Florida. Lots of stops. But your carbon footprint is tied into that, too. Okay? Now, they'll say, well, your carbon footprint's a lot better in an electric vehicle, but you still can't go cross-country. But you could go a couple of states, right? Gas-powered, you can't go anywhere. And flying-wise, you can go once a year. We'll let you out for three to four days. That's it. Right? And everybody will just... At first, be, ooh, ah, I don't know about that. And then they'll accept it because mm -hmm. that's what they do. They prepare you. They desensitize you. And then they put other stuff out there. So subliminally, you don't even want to travel anymore, right? And this is all about the carbon passport. People, and you don't hear any conservatives talking about this. Tell me, you know, I sit here, I try to warn you about the Daily Wire, all this other stuff. You're allowed to freely listen to whatever you want. You will not hear people talk about this because they are protecting this. And two, other people out there don't get it. I hear conservatives, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, well, you know, climate change is real. They don't know anything about geoengineering and chemtrail. They don't know anything about really harm. Weak at that point. None of it. And then when you talk about the carbon you footprint, they politics. think that it's just some type of, oh, well, we do need to do something because it is really going on. Well, they're affecting the atmosphere by dumping chemtrails weak. in the sky every day. They've been doing it for the last 20 years. So, 20. yeah, they're doing stuff to the earth. They admit to it. 50. Oh, harp and all that. Oh, yeah, they admit to it. But the stuff is just subliminal. They beat in your head long enough you believe it is real. So people are believing it's real. And then they don't understand the enslavement aspect because they've always envisioned this new world order. Like, oh, we're going to speak against it. You're going to be in jail cells. Well, yeah, some people will be in FEMA camps when they wipe out, you know, red states like Florida, like Florida and they hit them with harp. You'll be forced into a FEMA camp because you won't have a home anymore. And then they'll make you be thankful to the government for giving you a little roof over your head, even though they're the ones who wiped out your home. And they'll say, well, you still have to comply. You got to get a certain something in your body. If you want to live here, you got to have the carbon footprint in play, all this crap. Okay. Lots of different ways they're coming at you with it, but ultimately it is slavery. doesn't matter if you're straight, you're gay, you're black, you're white, you're trans. doesn't matter. It's for all of us. That's why everybody needs to wake up and fight against this and realize what they're doing and why they're psychologically uh, having us go after one another so we don't go after them while nobody questions in Congress. You never hear them talk about chemtrails. You never hear them talk about geoengineering because they all have to comp they're all complying to the climate agenda. They want you distracted with the other nonsense. This is slavery. You will be a full-on prisoner. 
all of us, no matter what our beliefs are, Democrat or conservative. They know the Democrats at first might throw up a fit, but as long as they have their toys, like their video games and their toys, which they'll still have, they'll be okay. Right? And they'll give them their virtual headsets, and then they'll be like, this is better than actually going to Hawaii. I don't have to deal with these mega people. I don't have to deal with real humans. So I'll go on the virtual. I love video games anyway. And they'll all be accepting of it, and they'll still defend the system because they're psychopaths who don't have a clue what's going on. Conservatives eventually will cave in because they won't be in a real prison like the people who supposedly went to jail on the 6th of January and all the other psyops they've created. And they'll say, well, you know, okay, I mean, what else are we supposed to do about it? What are we supposed to do about it? We're supposed to stop it. That's what the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are set up to do. So let me just read you this propaganda piece here. CNN, Business Insider, other uh, mainstream media outlets. The climate has a tourism problem. This is what they're saying. One tour company is proposing a solution, carbon passports that would limit how much carbon travelers could emit each year. This is what I've been warning about for years. Okay, taxed on your car. People are like, it's about money. It's not about money. It's about controlling you and enslaving you. Your home is your prison. When you leave your home, it's going to be like a recess. You're going to have 15 minutes or however far you go. You can't venture off. Okay, you're going to be trapped. Yes, in smart cities, but also everywhere else. Because if everything's digital, that's the problem. If there's no cash and it's cash because everything's digital, your footprint is tracked electronically. They shut your bank account off. They block you from starting your car if it's electric. They shut your air condition off, your heat off in the winter. It doesn't matter, right? Because you'll have an allowance. You have to live within this enslaved allowance of how much carbon you can emit, okay? And they'll be sitting there laughing, doing whatever they want all over the place in places that you're not allowed to go to because you won't be allowed to leave. So one company, I'm sure it's some satanic company, is proposing the carbon footprint in October report written by the, uh, by the future laboratory uh, and released by the travel company Intrepid. Uh, Intrepid, excuse me, Intrepid suggested the idea as a way to regulate travel's annual emissions. Figures from the Environmental Protection Agency show that 29% of global greenhouse gas emissions in 2021 came from transportation, including flights, trains, and cars. Okay, flights, trains, and cars. So in other words, you ain't going nowhere. Get used to it, right? What do you think the outbreak was about? You got used to staying in your home, Next being quarantined, weeks. not interacting with people. How are you interacting? Via technology. It's all going to be via technology inside your imprisonment home. I've warned for years. You're seeing it happen. It's the reason I'm silenced, which is fine. Silence me. I'll keep going. This stuff has to be known because this is nothing to do with your political affiliation. That's to do with us as humans being literally lab rats for them and being trapped and stuck wherever you are in the world. Okay? And it's going to be too late when they get your guns and all this other stuff they have going on at the same time. Then we're all we're going to be able to do is just take it and deal with it when they get when we allow them to get rid of cash, right? When they allow we are allowing them to poison our, our fertilizer and everything else so we can't grow and be independent of them. I mean, people need to wake up. So the card passport sound very familiar to the digital ID they were talking about a couple of years ago. It's the same thing, the same thing they're prepping you for. Oh, with the digital passport, the digital ID, we'll figure out who has one, who has it, and who doesn't, and then we can let them into the building and not let them in, right? Think about all this stuff with the footprint when they do the next outbreak, because it'll tie in. So the carbon passport will regulate travelers' emissions. The idea of carbon passports is based on the idea of personal carbon allowances. Um, they said it would encompass a cap on how much carbon people are allowed to emit over a certain period of time. <laughs> are you listening to this? The UK Parliament now lent a similar idea in 2008 reported the personal carbon trading. Carbon passports have taken that idea one step further because... They would involve tracking and limiting travel carbon emissions specifically. The report said individuals needed to limit their carbon use to two to three tons a year to mitigate the climate crisis. The average U.S. citizen emits 16 tons annually. Behavioral control. Okay? So if we all emit 16 tons, right? Think about if you if you stop doing half the things you do every day. We all have routines, right? So you probably get up. You make breakfast. That's carbon emissions, by the way, because you're using a stove. You're cooking. So don't forget that. It's everything. You shower, carbon emissions, right? Imagine taking what you do on a normal basis, which they claim is 16 tons, and a regular day. This is not including you going flying to Florida or California or wherever you might be going on vacation. This does not include you driving to see your mom or your dad or your kids. This is strictly day-to-day -day life, 16 tons, okay? So you can eliminate all that stuff right off the bat. Now they want you to take it. Not half full, like eight full, down to two tons from 16 tons. So pretty much, with the exception of you breathing, laying in your bed, anything that you touch and do in your home, television, carbon emissions, 
right? Even though you don't need the propaganda box, that's carbon emissions, okay? Cooking, carbon emissions. Your refrigerator, carbon emissions. Your air conditioner, carbon emissions. All your electricity, your lights, carbon emissions. Your shower, carbon emissions. Everything. So you're going to be taking your life. Not, I mean, it's the same. If you looked at a prisoner and you said, what's your day-to-day life? And they're like, oh, well, this is my day-to-day life. Okay, so we'll assume that their day-to-day life before they went to jail was this. Now their day-to-day life is this, and they go outside for 30 minutes. That's probably the equivalent, mathematically, to going from 16 tons to 2 tons. The only difference is you won't have bars. The bars will all be digital. You, you know, you put your electric locks on, or excuse me, your uh, smart meters, which they're putting on. Of course, they can shut your electricity off. You put your smart, you know, things on for your locks. They tell you, you know, create all these stories about how people are getting their locks picked, etc. Put that out there, so you need uh, electric locks now, or smart locks, so that nobody can break into your home. People will do it. Well, guess what? The smart meter locks in your home are going to lock you in. Remember the story I covered about the Amazon Go? The guy was locked in his home with his smart locks. Why? Oh, because uh, some psyop that they created, so they can get you prepared for being stuck in your home if you don't follow orders, if you don't comply. And even if you comply, for someone out there is like, I'll comply. This guy's a conspiracy nut. Yeah, this has nothing to do with me, okay, personally, or you Give personally. Give up rights, you lose more rights. They are going to, Next everything you like to do kids, is going to be taken away. Wife. So you're husband. eventually going to go, this is garbage, this is bull crap. Everyone last and, and you probably would be too narcissistic to go, I remember that guy was yelling about that, I should have listened. So listen now, and understand it's nothing to do with your skin color or your preference in the bedroom. They hate us. We're the carbon emission they want to get rid of, and that's why they have us fighting amongst each other. So they can implement this enslavement system. It is global enslavement. Anything you've ever heard about slavery and skin color, slavery, this and that in other countries... It's on a global scale, and it's so much worse, so much worse. It's everything that you normally do or everything that is normal, even getting food, will be controlled by them. You only be allowed to eat a certain amount. That's a carbon emission too. How, whatever you're eating, even if you're vegan and you hate meat, there's still carbon emission tied into that. They're going to tell you how much you can eat in a day, when you can eat in a day. And you got to be a real pansy to be like, oh, that's good. I'll let them. Or you just, you know, you're not human at this point if you're okay with this stuff. So... They're talking about it because they're getting you ready for it. And the only way to stop it is if we band together and no one is banding together. So the article goes on to say it's going to be tough to get people on board for it to work internationally. It will require collaboration from a lot of different stakeholders. There's your globalism right there, right, to make it work internationally. And what else do they need to do to get people on board? Well, if people don't want to be on board, they're going to psychologically convince people that they shouldn't travel anymore, right? That's me tying it back in with what I covered earlier. Every day, look up a story about some type of chaos with travel, planes, derailments, uh, train, excuse me, derailments, planes, obviously, uh, you know, emergency landings. I mean, they're not blowing any up yet, but don't be surprised if you hear those stories about pilots who wanted to crash planes into buildings. I think it's unbelievable. It makes it so that you don't want to get out of your house anyway, and then you're doing what they want to do, which is enslave you in it. And of course, they want you to still have your technology in the home because that's how they spy on you and listen to you. And if you meet with some of your friends inside your home and you start saying, you know what? I hate it the way it is. I wish I could go back to the way it used to be. They'll be listening on your Alexa or on your TV and they'll be knocking on your door. They'll be knocking on your door. Know what they'll be saying? Come with us. Now you're going to actually one of those cells. You were allowed to be free here, but you weren't complying because you were questioning us. Right? You're not allowed to question us. You're not allowed to question this way of life that we've given you. So now you go to a cell. So then people go, well, I don't want to go to a cell, so I'm not going to speak against it. There's your 1984. That's what this is headed towards. This is not paranoia. This is fact. And when it happens, the majority of people will still defend it until they until suddenly they start becoming conscious again. They go, this is hell. I hate this. It'll be too late. So wake up now before it is too late. I thank everybody for being here. Hope to see you on the website, uprisingrevival.com. Again, the video on UNLV is over there. Hope you're all doing well. God bless you. As always, share this video. Okay, people need to know about it. Share it. Thanks again, everybody, for being here. God bless you and your families.